branch of that organization. And the director was very, very involved in, in uh, baby killing as far as uh, promoting it and so forth. I don't recall her name. I do have the information, but I don't recall her name right now. And she was told by the higher ups in the government, we've got to increase the amount of abortions. She was given the orders to do it. And then she had the opportunity to watch an ultrasound of an abortion in progress. And she fell to her knees and repented before God. She walked out on her job, said, I'm never coming back here. She walked down the street to a pro-life organization. It's almost like the Apostle Paul, you know, saying, what can I do to stop this baby killing? I want to do everything I can. She said, I'm going to tell it. I'm going to tell what they do. See, because they have, it's conspiratorial. They had meetings on how to get more abortions because they get money for it from the government. Now Planned Parenthood has gone to court and they're going to try and silence her so she can't tell what went on behind the closed doors. And she said, I'm going to tell it anyway. No matter what anybody says, that's enough of this baby killing. Her heart's broken. She just can't believe she had ever done it. I mean, she really did repent. And she said, this has been a spiritual awakening for me, and I've, I've given myself to God. I'm not going to do this anymore. So the government may pass laws and do all this stuff, but God is greater. He can pull people right out that will shout from the rooftops those things that are done in secret. So pray for that woman. I'll find out... Uh, I'll get that information together for you so you can pray, pray for her. God knows who she is. But, uh, you know, they'd like to kill her. So, but God is in charge. He'll take care of her. Don't worry about it, but pray for her. I think it's awesome how God can get in there and start working somebody over and change them around. Remember when he did it for you? Praise the Lord. So, you know, really, studying is not just uh, when you put on the thick glasses and try to dissect and delineate. And, no, studying is a spiritual experience. God can move through it. And he does. And then he goes on in verse 16 and says, But shun... Profane and vain babblings. Oh, by the way, uh, where I first heard this was on WTMJ Milwaukee on the uh, Charlie Sykes program. They brought this up and uh, they actually were going to, I don't know if they did it, but they're going to bring this woman on to tell her story, which I think is awesome too. But they're going to try and shut her up because she's going to make the connections on how the, the Obama administration is demanding that Planned Parenthood induce the people to have more and more and more abortions. Uh, we're dealing with some high profile wickedness here. But prayer to the Savior will do the job. Amen. Now he says, but shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. In other words, study, become a workman that's not ashamed, rightly divide that word of truth, but don't get into profane and vain babblings. You know, it never fails. You get studying the Bible and people will walk in the door and they'll sit down. We had some people in here last Sunday. <clears throat> We had one who was a Satanist himself. He's doing all the hand signs, El Cernuno, so that satanic salutes and so forth and, and uh, making lewd remarks and so forth. We had two of those guys in here last Sunday. Uh, there will probably be more. 
Sometimes they, the uh, enemy will put plants in here to see how much damage they can do. But they never learn, do they? God is greater. And if they come back, the door swings out too. So that, that'll be it. The Bible says after the first and second admonition, reject. That's all, they're all done. You might say that sounds cruel. No, the body needs to be clean. We don't need anybody coming here doing satanic salutes and uh, etc., glaring at the women and so forth, making lewd remarks. These guys aren't here for the right reason and full of devils. And we're going to run into that. We've run into it for years. You know, a number of years ago, there was a Satanist that came in here and he had the studded collar on and all that and he listened to me preach and he came up. And he looked at me and said, I hate you. That was the most despicable speaking I ever heard. And I hate you. I said, thank you very much. Is it coming from the devil? That's, that's high praise. I, 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 you know, really. I appreciate that. I'm on the right track then. Because if it hits you that way, then I know it's right. Well, uh, he was sputtering around for a while and finally left. Why do they even bother to come in? Well, see, the devil sends people to church sometimes. God draws people, and the devil sends people to see what he can try to do. He never quits. He's, he's presumptuous to see whatever damage he can do. But God is always victorious. And the Lord himself is here with us, without question. So... That makes everything all right, doesn't it? But you'll have people that will come in sometimes and profane babbling. I'll tell you what. <laughs> They'll come in with profane doctrines. And they want to convert you to their doctrine. Well, I'll tell you something. Nobody need to even bother trying to convert me to their doctrine. I've been around the block a few times. I used to teach Schofieldism. It's of the devil. I used to teach dispensationalism. It's of the devil. I used to teach secret rapture. It's of the devil. I don't care who knows it. I believe we'll be caught up to meet him in the air, but it's no secret. All this thing, people vanishing away, disappearing, and it's always the women. The men get left behind. Men are evil. Did you ever see those Baptist films? All this uh, Tim LaHaye nonsense and uh, all that other after dinner hooey. Did you ever see that stuff? It's always the women and the children go. There's a pile of clothes on the floor. The man comes home. Oh, it must be the rapture. Oh. Men don't go, I guess. See, men are rough. Men are evil. Women are kind and sweet and nice. Hey, <laughs> I think there's a few that aren't. It's strange how things can be so off. And then you'll have people come in and they'll start talking to you about Area 51. Shape-shifting. Right? Lizard people. Aliens. That's not the gospel. There's nothing in the Bible that says any of that exists. Oh, I know there's strange things out there. There's demonic activity out there. Or they'll come in and say, Oh, Satan has a seed line that came from angels that lusted after women and produced children that were half angel, half... <laughs> I saw a little kid one time wearing a t-shirt that said, little angel child. No, 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 no. The Bible doesn't teach anything a 42nd cousin relative to that. And we've had Bible studies on it. It's easy to prove. If you know what the Bible does say, 
you're going to know what it doesn't say. 